Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. So on today's video tutorial, guys, we are still going through the grade 12 Mathematica Literacy Paper 1 that was written in June 2023. And in this video tutorial, guys, we're going to be having a look at question 2.1. And question 2.1 falls under the umbrella of finance. This is a financial document that we are going to be analyzing. And it's actually an invoice for booking a reservation at a guest house okay so before we get started with today's video tutorial guys please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel please make sure that you have clicked on the notification bell so that you get notified every single time i upload a new video tutorial guys and also please don't forget to give these video tutorials a huge thumbs up it really helps the channel grow and it helps the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics and also consider being a part of the maths gang guys becoming a member of the channel the perks of basically being a member is that you get to watch all these video tutorials a bit earlier than um the non-members okay so even if you're not, not a member um of the channel so you'll still get to watch the channel um you'll still get to watch the video tutorials but a bit later as compared to the members okay so that's just the perks um of being a member so please support guys by becoming a member of the channel please join and become a member okay so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial So like I mentioned, guys, on today's video tutorial, we're going to be having a look at question 2.1. We're going to be analyzing an invoice for a booking reservation. Um, you have to make sure that you've got um, your addendum and you're going to be focusing on a next year A uh, for this question. So we're going to be analyzing this invoice for booking a guest house. All right. So let's have a look. It says roadside tours and travel agency made a booking at a guest house for 36 work colleagues to attend a conference in Abington. okay the guest house offers rooms with two beds and four beds for accommodation and extra a shows an invoice that roadside tours and travel agency received from the guest house the total amount for accommodation and meals were paid for in advance okay so we basically told that the roadside tours and travel uh, travel agency made a booking at this particular guest house and then they made a booking for 36 uh, work colleagues that would be attending a conference in Uppington, okay? Then we are told that now this guest house basically offers rooms that have two beds and there are rooms that have four beds, okay? And then we are and then we are basically told to um, use an extra A to basically answer the questions that are given. And then we are told that the, the total amount for accommodation and the meals were paid for in advance. So they already paid for all of these things um, in advance. Okay, right. So it says, use an extra A and the information above to answer the questions that follow. It says, write down the address of the guest house. Okay, so let's have a look at an extra A, guys. Let's see what is basically given to us here. So this is the booking or the invoice for the booking, right? So we see here that we are given on the hill this is on the the guest house is called on the hill guest house it is on 125 bossy street in uppington you're given the telephone numbers given the cell phone numbers if you want to contact the guest house and you're given the email as well as the website okay this is the tax invoice number okay and then we are told then the, the people that made the booking reservations is the roadside tours and travel agency their address is their address is rooms 3 to 12 ground floor rosie garden office park r22 bush street industrial park 0157 centurion okay so the, the roadside tours and travel agency their business is situated in centurion okay we're given the on the tours or the we're given the roadside tours and travel agencies contact details right we're given the day that they're going to check in the day that they're going to check out we're given the number of guests that are going to be coming which is 36 right and then we are given now the item description right so if they book a four bedroom right for two nights per person 
per night the price is 850 for a two bedroom for two nights per person per night 900 okay and then for 36 lunch meals for two nights per person per night is 800 and for 36 dinner meals for two nights per person per night is 90 right okay so we can see that the booking or the roadside tours and travel agency employees are gonna be basically at this guest house for basically two nights okay then we're also given the bank account details for the on the hill guest house Okay, the bank with Standard Bank, the branch code, the account number that you need to deposit the money in, right? They tell them that now, if you're basically checking in, right, the time to check in is 2 p.m. And the time to check out is 10 in the morning, okay? Then we're also given this cancellation policy here. If you decide that now, okay, maybe five employees are not going to come, right? Okay, this is the cancellation policy. Okay, okay, and it says that can it says that cancellation will attract the following charges, which will automatically be debited to the on or to the tour operator's account. Okay, so twenty five percent of accommodation cost if the booking is cancelled before check in time. Right, so you basically have to pay twenty five percent of the accommodation cost if you cancel before the check-in time so if you cancel before what is the check-in time two so if you cancel maybe at uh any time before 2 p.m right you are liable to pay 25 percent of the accommodation cost right okay then we are told they have that 75 percent of accommodation cost right if the booking is cancelled after check-in time on the check-in date okay so both of them is on the check-in date sorry about that okay so if you decide to basically cancel your reservation okay on the check-in date after the check-in time so if you cancel after two then you need to still pay 75 percent of whatever the com accommodation amount is okay so you need to basically take note of this um information that is given here it's very important okay because it's going to help us in answering the questions that are given to us okay happiness let's have a look at the questions right question 2.2.1 it says that write down the address of the guest house so where is this guest house located okay so we were given here that the on the hill guest house right is located in 125 bossy street Uppington, okay, 105 Bossy Street, Uppington. That is the address of the guest house. This address here that is given, this is the address of the roadside tours and travel agency. It's not the address of the guest house, okay. So the address here we are told on the hills guest house, okay, and the address is 125 Bossy Street, Uppington. All right, so it's 125 Bossy Street, Uppington. That is where. The guest house is located question 2.1.2 the accommodation cost includes 15 percent vet okay determine excluding that the price for a person per night in a two bedroom or a two bed yeah in a two bedroom okay so here right we are told that all these accommodation costs that we are given in the invoice right basically include 15 percent back so that has been included where okay in these amounts let me just zoom that in okay so in these amounts here for a four bedroom okay two nights this 850 it includes that that is already included in there for the two bedroom that 900 it's that has already been calculated in there okay so we are told that VAT is included in those amounts. Yeah? Now we want to determine an amount excluding VAT. Yeah? Now we need to highlight, guys, all these keywords. We want to determine the amount excluding VAT. For what? For a person per night in a two bedroom. Okay, so we're going to focus our attention, right, on the two bedroom price. We're going to focus our attention on the two bedroom price okay that is where our attention is is right and we want to calculate what is the amount excluding that 
for one person that decides that they want to basically book a room in this two bedroom okay so now i'm going to introduce you guys to this new method that you guys can use to help you calculate an amount including that an amount excluding that okay okay so we already know that for one person okay because this is the price per person per night so this is just the price for one person okay so the price for one person price for one person per night okay in a two bedroom okay is equal to 900 okay and we are told that this amount already includes the 15 percent vat okay so now we want to determine what is the amount excluding the vat okay so if we had to remove the vat from this amount what would be the amount excluding that okay so i'm going to introduce you guys to this new method i'm going to do it in green okay so just quickly copy down this table okay and then i'll explain what i'm basically doing with this table so we basically want to determine amount and amount excluding that so let me just give you guys a nice scenario let's say you basically um go to the shops right and you basically want to buy chips right and then maybe let's say for example it says that okay the price of these chips um before that is equal to 20 rand okay so if you actually want to think about it right you can actually say that okay the price of these chips before anything has been added to that price is a hundred percent so the price excluding that right we can represent that as a hundred percent okay because we haven't added anything to the original amount of those chips now yeah? so the price of anything if that is not included if that is excluded is a hundred percent because we haven't added anything to that amount that amount is key nothing has been added to it right then we already know that the vet amount is what 15 percent now what would be the price including that now the price including that would be the price excluding that plus the vet amount which is a hundred and fifteen percent so if you now for example get your chips and then they say okay the price for these chips um before that right or excluding that is 20 rand right now if we add the vet amount to the 20 rand the price of the chips is 23 rand okay so the price of the chips now including that is going to be 23 rand so that amount contains 115 percent so that, that amount now represents 115 percent okay so if you're thinking about a price of the if so if you're thinking about something okay and we are told that that something or the price of that item excludes that then you can just think okay that amount basically just represents 100 percent of the price it just represents 100 percent of the price okay now if you want the price including that that means that now we've now already included that into that amount okay so that item would then represent 115 percent of that amount okay so it's fine it's still a bit confusing let's see how we can apply this um to this question to determine what the price for one person per night will be for a two bedroom excluding that okay so we already know that now this 900 red this 900 red represents what amount Okay, this 900 rand represents the amount including that. So you're gonna take that amount. You're gonna take that 900 rand. So this is our actual solution. We're gonna take that 900 rand. Okay, okay. This is the amount including, and we're gonna multiply. So to determine the amount excluding that, you always need to think of this. You need to multiply by what you want, and you're gonna divide by what you have. Okay, so it's gonna be the 900. You're gonna multiply by what we want. What do we want? We want to determine what is the amount excluding that. Okay, so you're gonna multiply by what you want, which is the hundred percent because the hundred percent represents the price excluding that so you're going to multiply by what you want okay you multiply by what you want and you divide by what you have what do we have what do we have here what does this 900 rand represent it represents the amount including that 
So we are going to divide by what the amount including that. And the amount including that is represented by what? It is represented by 115%. So we're going to divide by 115%. Okay. So that is how you basically get your amount excluding that. You multiply by what you want and you divide by what you have. What do we want? We want the amount excluding that. Okay. So we multiply by 100%. Okay. What do we have? We've got your amount including that. Okay. So we're going to divide by 115%. Okay. So from here, simple. Do you see that the percentage and the percentage cancel each other out, right? And if you just punch this into your calculator like that, 900, 900 is the same as saying 900 divided by 1. So if you take 900 and you multiply it by 100 and you divide it by 115, you will get that the amount, excluding that, is equal to the price for one person, okay? The price for one person per night in a two bedroom excluding that is equal to 782 rand 0.6086957 remember we're dealing with money so you need to round this off to two decimal places right so it's going to be equal to 782.2 two decimal places guys you look at the third digit after the comma so the third digit after the comma is the eight that will tell us what we need to do to the second digit right so this eight is bigger than five so therefore it's going to be six the zero goes up okay all right and we have basically calculated the amount excluding fat okay so i'm just going to quickly repeat this right we already know that the price or the amount including that is just equal to 900 right think of it this way an amount what is an amount excluding that if an amount hasn't if we haven't added anything to an amount right that means that that amount is clean right it's just a hundred percent right do you guys agree so we can just say that the price excluding that just represents a hundred percent of that amount okay now when we add our VAT amount of 15 percent the price that now includes that now if we add VAT to that amount we just take that 100 plus the 15, it becomes 150. So now, to continue to find or determine the amount excluding that, you just take that amount that you are given, and you need to think, what does this amount represent? Write it down. It represents the amount including that. Write it down, okay? Write that 900 down. Then you multiply by what you want. What do we want? We want the amount or the price excluding that. So you multiply by 100%. Divide it by what do you have okay i'll write that down here you divide okay you divide by what you have what do we have right we have the price including that so you're going to divide by 115 percent because 115 percent represents the price including that then from there it's easy peasy lemon squeezy that's that's how you get your final answer okay i hope you guys appreciated this explanation it's very important i've i've been consistent when it comes to this explanation in all my video tutorials where i explain price excluding that price including that i use this method and if you use this method you'll never go wrong if you use just this understanding you will never go wrong even in just percentage calculations you'll always get them correct if you think in this way okay so i hope you guys appreciated that let's have a look at the next question Question 2.1.3, it says, calculate the missing value C, the total for the four bedroom. Okay, so we're going to have a look at our next A. We are told that there's a missing value C, right, which is the total for the four bedroom. Okay, so here, guys, still nice and easy, okay? If we're already given what the total here is here at the bottom, right, how did they get to that total, okay? So all that we need to do here, right, we need to add. For you to get to the total, you take the C plus C plus the 28,800 plus the 5,760 plus the 6,480. If you add all those values up together, they need to give you 75,040 rand. Okay, so that is our starting point. Adding all these values together need to basically give us 75,040. 
So write that as a mathematical equation, okay? So let's do that. Like I said, it's going to be C plus, okay, plus 28,800 plus 5,760 plus 6,480. If you add all these values up together, they need to give us 75,040 rand, okay? So you can add the dots, uh, the zero zeros. It makes no difference. Okay. So that's basically how we're going to set up this equation, right? Okay. And then from here, all that we need to do, we need to solve for this missing value. Okay. How are we going to solve for this missing value? With mathematical literacy, guys, another super tip. Okay. You need to show all the bits and pieces. How did you get to a particular solution? How did you get to a particular answer? Okay. So before you even show the final answer, Show that it's C plus the 28,000 plus 5,760 plus 6,480. What is that when you add it up together? Okay. Okay. So when you add up these values together, you will get 41,040. Okay. This is equal to 75,040. Okay, so you can add the dot zero zero. I think it makes no difference. Okay, still the same thing. Okay, and then all that we need to do here, we want to solve for C. So, in other words, you want to have the C on its own, you want to isolate the C, right? So, how are we going to remove this 41,040? Okay, so to remove this 41,040 from the left hand side, guys, you're going to minus it okay so if you minus forty one thousand and forty from the left hand side that means that you need to minus the forty one thousand and forty on the right hand side okay just so that we maintain balance with our equation whatever you do on the left hand side you need to do on the right hand side okay so then here we, do you see that this basically cancels each other out because we've already minus this from that okay so we cancel that meaning on the left hand side we are just left with c so c is equal to okay c is equal to thirty four thousand. okay so that is our final answer all right so this one is nice and easy all that you just need to take note of is that i mean you just need to add all these values together including the c just adding even the C helps you set up your equation. Just starting with C plus this plus this plus this helps you set up this equation. From there, you can just see that, okay, I need to now simplify this equation even further by collecting these values together, right? Gives me 41,040, right? And then from there, I want to isolate my C. I want my C to be on its own. That means I want to remove this 41,040 from the left hand side. How will I remove it? I basically need to do the inverse operation of what I was doing. So because it was a plus here, that means it must be a minus. Because plus and a minus, plus 1, minus 1 is 0. Okay, Plus 41,040, minus 41,040 gives us 0. So we've cancelled it out. And because we've minus here, right, we need to minus on the right hand side. And that is our final answer. Okay, fabulous. Let's have a look at question 2.1.4. Right. So question 2.1.4, guys, is a ratios question. Okay. So you need to basically pay attention. But in all my video tutorials, I literally do my explanations the same way. Because I feel like they like it's the simplest way that you could basically understand that. Okay. I don't think it can go any simpler than these explanations okay so please make sure that you take down notes you jot down these notes because they are really really going to come in handy guys they're really going to help you provided that you're practicing provided that you're watching my video tutorials if you don't have a private tutor okay watch my video tutorials practice with me listen when i explain you will never go wrong okay right let's have a look at question 2.1.4 it says determine in simplified form the ratio of the number of guests okay we want to determine the ratio okay of the number of guests that are booked in a two bedroom to the number of guests that are booked in a in four bedrooms okay already guys when we're dealing with ratio we know that our starting point is that we want something to I'm just going to say X for the purpose of this explanation, okay? When you want to start off this question, we want to write something 
to something. Okay, that's how that is our starting point. In this case, the question tells you what that something and that something needs to be. Okay, the first something is that we want to write down the ratio of the guests that are booked in a two bedroom. So we need to determine the guests that are booked in a two bedroom. The next one, we need to determine the guests that are booked in a four bedroom. Okay, once we determine that, okay, then we will be able to then start off our ratio questions. How many people were booked in a two bedroom? How many people were booked in a four bedroom? We already know that, okay, 36 employees were booked into this guest house okay but now we don't know how many of them were booked in a two bedroom and how many of them were booked in a four bedroom so that is what we now need to determine how will we determine the number of people that are booked in a two bedroom and the number of people that are booked in a four bedroom okay that's the first thing that we need to determine the number of people that were booked in two in a two bedroom and the number of people that are booked in a four bedroom so let's follow follow with me please okay so we wanted to, to determine the people that were booked in a two bedroom okay so we're gonna have a look at this invoice that is given to us right okay so we are told that okay the total that was paid for the two bedroom right was 28,800 okay for the two bedroom there we are told that okay the number of people that are booked into the two the total amount that was paid for the people that were booked in the two bedroom was 28,800 okay so we're going to use this amount to help us determine the number of people that were actually booked in the two bedroom and we already know that for one person okay they pay how much 900 for how many nights for two nights okay so we already know that one person okay we're dealing with a two bedroom we already know that one person pays 900 okay but now they were there for how many nights for two nights so one person will pay that 900 times two so if you want to basically calculate how much each person paid okay in total for just pay, booking the two bedroom we take that 900 and multiply by two and it is 1800 okay so one person paid 1800 out of okay that's 28800 okay so how many people were there or how many people booked into the two bedroom right okay we're gonna take that total of we're gonna take that total of 28800 okay we're gonna take that total of 28800 and we are going to basically divide it by that 1800 to get how many people were actually booked into the two bedroom okay so it's 28800 divided by 1800 that basically gives us 16 people were actually booked into the two bedroom okay all right so then we see that the people that are booked into the two bedroom were actually 16 people because we know that one person for two nights actually pays um, 1,800 if they basically want to um, sleep in the two bedroom. Okay, so we already know now we're done with the, the two bedroom um, part of the ratio question. Okay, we already know that there are 16 people that were booked into the two bedroom okay so now all that we need to do is we need to determine the number of people that were booked into the four bedroom okay remember we already did the calculations remember we already determined what c was okay and with this question unfortunately if you got the previous question incorrect that means that this the, the error would carry on okay so then we already found that our c was equal to 34,000. Okay, so we're gonna just put that into our table so we can use that in our calculations. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We want to determine the people that were booked in the four bedroom. Okay, okay, how can you determine the people that are booked in the four bedroom? We're gonna use this an extra um that was given to us here, right? The invoice actually that was given to us now. Yeah? And then in the invoice, we know I'm gonna just remove that so that I can focus your attention 
on this row okay we're focusing on the fill bedroom and we were told that okay the price per person per night was 850 okay so one person pays 850 for one night okay so one person so one person okay pays 850 for one night however guys they are not here for one night they are here for two nights that is why we need to now multiply that by two okay so you take that 850 you multiply it by two okay so if you take 850 and you multiply it by two you will get that for one person okay if you basically booked into the four bedroom for two nights you would pay 1700 okay so therefore one person pays okay for two nights if they want to basically sleep in the four bedroom okay so now all that we need to do now is we're going to take now this amount okay and then we want to take the total amount for the four bedroom and you're going to divide that and we want to divide it by this amount for one person to get how many people um were actually booked into the four bedroom okay what is the total amount for the four bedroom it was thirty four thousand. so we're going to take that thirty four thousand. okay we're going to take that thirty four thousand. the total amount we're going to divide it by the price for one person of one thousand seven hundred okay to get how many people do you see that actually yeah let me show you something as well you see the rands and the rands are cancelling meaning that the answer that we're going to get is not going to be in units in rands okay but it's going to actually tell us how many people were booked into that four bedroom okay so if you take thirty four thousand and you divide it by 1700 you will get actually 20 people were booked into the four bedroom you see the, how nice this question is okay right all that we needed to do first determine how many people were booked into the two bedroom determine how many people were booked into the four bedroom and then from here we can actually start off now the ratio part of the question right and remember when i started off the question i mentioned that when we do our ratios right it tells you what you need to do it tells you how you need to set up your ratios right remember the question says that we need to determine in simplified form the ratio of the number of guests booked in a two bedroom to the number of guests that are booked in a four bedroom okay so in other words let us set us let us set this up like that okay what is the number of people so i'm gonna write people in a two bedroom it tells you what to do people in two bedroom what is the number let me say number of people in a two bedroom when it says two right that two basically means that i'm gonna put the colon to the number of people in four bedroom set it up like this exactly the way the question tells you to set it up you see we are being told exactly what to do okay here the mathematics just starts when we basically have to determine the number of people that are booked there that's us doing the math but here we can set up we are told how to set up our question right already things are made easy for us right okay all that we need to do now is we need to substitute the values that we obtain okay for the people that are booked into a two bedroom how many people were booked into a two bedroom we got that 16 people were booked into a two bedroom write that down substitute it in two how many people were booked into the four bedroom we found that 20 people were booked into the four bedroom we want to substitute that in we are not done okay now the question said that we need to now determine the ratio in simplified form so always when they say in simplified form they are basically saying that your ratio needs to be in when you basically start off your question okay or when you're solving going through the process of solving your question it needs to be in the form of one is to something right one is to something okay so here we already see that it's not in the form of one is to something okay so that already we need to simplify this further okay so what do we need to do we can just divide okay the left hand side by 16 and what you do on the left hand side you need to also do on the right hand side so if we divide the left hand side by 16 16 divided by 16 is equal to one i'm going to just put this in red but you don't have to show it like this okay 
Okay, if we divide the left hand side by 16, okay, you need to also divide the right hand side by 16. I've basically written this in red to show you that you don't actually have to show this in your calculations, but I'm just doing this there. I'm putting it there so that you guys see where I'm getting my values from. 16 divided by 16 is equal to 1. Colon. 20 divided by 16. If you just put 20 divided by 16 into your cash old calculator, you'll get 5 over 4. I'm not going to get technical in how you need to basically find the highest common factor and then whatnot. Just put it into your calculator, guys. We, we're working with time here. Guys, if you're using the cashier calculator, it does this for you. We don't have to complicate our lives and now try to show that we know maths, right? 20 divided by 16 gives you 5 over 4, right? And then we cannot leave our answer in this fraction form, okay? Then you need to now continue to now multiply it by... 4 because we want to get rid of this 4 okay and for us to get rid of this 4 because we are dividing by this 4 we need to do the inverse of division okay and the inverse of division is multiplication so if you multiply by 4 over 1 what do you notice is happening okay let me just leave it like this if you multiply by 4 over 1 what you do on the right you need to also do on the left okay right and then let me show you what's happening. What's happening? Why are we saying it's cancelling? Why is this cancelling? Do you see that now? This 4 cancels out with this 4. Okay? Or you can just say 4 divided by 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And you're just left with the 5 on the right hand side. Then 4 times 1 is just 4. Then you're left with the 4 on the left hand side. So the answer is 4 is to 5. Therefore, we've actually answered this question now. Okay? In simplified form, the ratio of the number of guests that are booked in the two, into the two-bedroom to the number of guests that are booked into the four-bedroom is four is to five, okay? Here, just a tip, make sure that you set up your ratio the way the sentence tells you to set it up. It tells you exactly that you need to write down the ratio of the two-bedroom Number of people that are booked into the two bedroom to the number of guests that are booked into the, into the four bedroom. We set it up like that, guys. We're not going to complicate our lives. Okay. And then from there, that's when you actually realize that, oh, okay, now I need to determine how many people were booked into the two bedroom. How many people were booked into the four bedroom? Then now you go to your next A and you try and see how, what values will help me determine the number of people that were booked into these rooms, okay? Already, we are told that the four-bedroom, for a person, how much is it for two nights, okay? The two-bedroom, for a person, how much is it for two nights? Then already here, the trick here is that you guys need to understand that you need to multiply these values by two. And that will just give you the value for one guest, okay? These values that are here, on this last column gives you the total for all the guests that are in the four bedroom and in the two bedroom so the key here is just you seeing that all that you need to do you need to take the total and you need to divide it by the price per person for two nights and that will give you the number of people that were booked into the guest house and then then from that simple easy you write that 16 substitute the 16 that we obtained and you substitute that 20 that we obtained into the correct position. And then you need to remember, when we want it in simplified form, our starting point needs to be in the form of 1 is to something, okay? Therefore, for us to get to 1 is to something, I need to divide by the 16 so that I can have a 1 on the left-hand side. And what you do on the left-hand side, you need to do on the right-hand side, okay? However, the key here is that we can't leave our answer as just one is two five over four okay that is why then we continued to multiply by four on the left hand side and the right hand side so we get rid of this denominator we can't have it in a fraction four okay okay and then that is how we got to our final answer easy peasy right easy peasy okay so that is how you do your ratios questions if they tell you to leave it in simplified form all right let us have a look at the last question question 2.1.5 so these questions 2.1.4 2.1.5 now these questions are no longer level one questions okay here we need to apply we, we, we are applying ourselves now we are thinking okay 
this is how we basically get distinctions in these questions okay because the other questions are just easy all right okay but if you want distinctions this is where you are scoring when you want dis distinctions okay this is where you're applying concepts you are thinking okay in these questions let's have a look at question 2.1.5 two work colleagues who booked the two bedrooms cancelled as follows so so now there's two work colleagues now that now decided to cancel oh my god okay they just not decided to cancel so that our lives are a bit hard and now we need to do a booking cancellation and we need to calculate how much now we need to um the the the, the travel agency needs to pay if people have canceled but it's not hard guys okay just needs you to focus all right so we know two work colleagues who booked the two bedroom have canceled okay now we given the times the different times that they've canceled because remember when i was doing the introduction right we basically basically spoke about the cancellation policy okay this is the cancellation policy we're dealing with the cancellation policy now then the different amounts that you pay when you cancel at different times okay so let's see when they cancel right so we are told that one of these work colleagues canceled at 11 and the other one canceled at three okay so one canceled before the check-in time and the other one canceled after the check-in time okay let's just write that down okay and one cancelled at after check-in right so we need to look at the cancellation policy and see how much they'll have to pay for these different cancellations okay but let's continue with the question right it says that one cancelled at 11 while the other one cancelled at three on the check-in date okay the meal cost will be fully refunded so we are told that the price for the meals will be uh, fully refunded while the accommodation cost will be refunded according to the conditions of the cancellation policy stated in annex j so we told that the two operators stated that the that the refund would be less than 2500 so in other words this question wants us to determine how much the tour operator would be refunded right for these two cancellations and then whatever amount that we have now we would have calculated we need to determine if it ex it is actually less than this 2.5 okay so the first thing is that i think the easiest part part that we can start off with is calculating the refund for the meals okay because we already know that for these two individuals that have decided to cancel their booking they will be fully refunded for their meals okay so we can start off uh by calculating the the refunds for the meals okay when you're talking about refund guys we're talking about an amount that you, the the tour operator is going to get back because remember we were told that for this for booking of this guest the uh, for booking of this guest house they actually paid for the amount in in advance okay so now obviously because now these people have cancelled he's gonna be he needs to get some money back okay so let's calculate the amount that they basically charge them for meals now it's just two people remember for two nights so for the first person it's gonna be 80 it's gonna be this 80 um rand multiplied by two for two lunch meals right and then this 90 rand multiplied by two plus the same calculations for the next person okay so just to calculate the refund for the meals okay we are told that okay for the lunch meals it's 80 rand okay and then because it's going to be two days right so it's two lunches multiplied by two okay so this is for the lunch meals plus for your dinner meals it's the 90 rand multiplied by two because it's two dinner meals multiplied by two okay so whatever we're going to get here this just gives us the refund for the meals for one person so whatever answer that we get from here we still need to then multiply that by two okay because it's two people all right or another person might just see it like this okay another person might be like okay it's 80 rand multiplied by two because it's two lunch meals okay for obviously one person multiplied by two because you've got two people right plus that 90 rand multiplied by two because it's two dinner meals 
multiply it by two because it's two people okay so another person might actually see it like this okay so all that we need to do now is we need to punch these values into your calculator and determine how much was the refund for the meals okay so here if you actually just punch the first part into your calculator 80 multiplied by 2 plus 90 multiplied by 2 this will give you 340 but remember it's for two people so therefore if you continue with that and you multiply by 2 you will get 680 that is the total refund that you would get for the meals for two people okay alternatively if you just wanted to use this method where you could see that for the lunch and the dinner meals you still needed to multiply by a further two okay it'll be that 80 multiplied by two multiplied by two it's 320 plus 90 multiplied by two multiplied by two 360 and then if you add these two values together you will get 680 all right so it just depends on how you see it but then you still get to the same answer okay so that is just basically the refund for the uh, meals so now all that we need to do now is we need to determine the refunds for the individual people because remember they cancelled at different times and because of that there are different percentages that they take from the price that you've already paid okay so let's deal with the first person okay so let's see how much the first person pays remember both of them had actually booked into a two bedroom okay and remember we calculated for a two bedroom right you actually pay 900 rand multiplied by two okay so we're gonna just take that 900 rand multiplied by two which is 1800 okay then from here let's just look at the cancellation policy right remember the first person cancelled at 11 a.m okay so it's before the check-in time so let's look at the cancellation policy and see how much you are charged if you cancel before the check-in time on the check-in date okay so if you cancel before the check-in time on the check-in date you need to pay 25 percent of this accommodation cost right meaning that out of that 1800 he needs to pay what let me write it down okay this person or the travel agency will therefore need to pay 25% of the travel, I mean, the accommodation cost of 1,800. Do you see that? Okay. So then how much did they actually pay? So 25% of 1,800 is the same as just saying 25 divided by 100 multiplied by 1,000. 800 okay right so if you punch this into your calculator right you will get that okay you will get 450 okay so in other words out of this 1800 you need to pay uh, you need to pay um 450 so how much were you basically refunded so in other words this person was actually refunded 1800 minus because he has to pay this yeah has to pay okay he has he has to pay that 25 percent of that 1800 so he has to pay the 450 so that 450 now we minus it from the original amount okay so we take 1800 you minus 450 okay meaning that the amount that the first person was actually refunded was 1350 that is the amount that they actually got back okay right so this one is very tricky someone might just think that oh actually they were refunded 450 no okay that you need to pay 25 percent of that 1800 okay so what is 25 percent of 1800 it's 450 they have to pay that it doesn't go into their pockets okay so if they have to pay 450 what will be what will they be left with from that 1800 they'll be left with 1800 minus the 450 they paid which is 1350 okay so that is how much the first person will be basically refunded okay let's have a look at the second person okay so we're building so i already know that okay for the meals they were refunded 600 and 80 okay the first person is refunded 1350 
all that's left is for us to determine how much the sec second person would be refunded okay let's see so the second person okay so the second person now had cancelled their booking at 1500 this is after the check-in time right so now they are liable they have to pay 75 percent okay okay i'm gonna write this down therefore this person has to pay 75 percent of the accommodation cost okay they have to pay that because that is what the 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 cancellation says 75 percent of the accommodation cost has to be paid right we already know that they're just booked into the two bedroom right so you're gonna just take that 75 percent of means multiply accommodation cost for one person for two nights in a two bedroom remember we said it's 1800 right seven percent seven i mean 75 percent guys is the same as just saying 75 divided by 100 okay right so if you punch this into your calculator 75 divided by 100 multiply by 1800 you will get that this person now actually has to pay 1350 from this 1000 800 okay so therefore how much would they actually be refunded okay this is very important therefore they will be refunded the remaining okay they'll be refunded the 1800 minus how much they paid of 1350 which is equal to 450 so the second person will only be refunded um 400 okay so here this question is just very tricky you just need to read your questions properly and just think this amount that i've just calculated what is it representing okay here we're thinking we are not just digit doing things okay we are thinking as we are going okay so now all that we need to now get is what is the total refund therefore the total refund that travel agency gets is equal to we're going to start off with the refund for the meals remember we calculated that it was 680 plus the refund that the first person gets first person shooter mode <laughs> <laughs> okay which is 1350 plus the refund that the second person gets which is 450 so all that we need to do now is we need to punch these values into our calculator to get what the total refund is okay so the travel agency will be refunded 2480 remember they made a statement we're not done we're not done they made a statement that the two operator basically stated that the refund would be less than 2500 is the refund less than 2500 remember we were told that we need to verify sharing all calculations whether his statement is correct so we can see that actually his statement was correct because his total refund is actually less than 2500 2480 guys is less than 2500 okay therefore the two operators statement is correct is valid or correct okay and that is how you are going to get that whopping seven marks okay so here guys i'm sure you saw we were thinking Okay, we were thinking the mistake I think most learners would make here is just stopping at that 450. But this 450 just tells you how much you would be paid. It doesn't tell you how much you'd now be refunded, how much you'd get back from that 1,800. So take note of that. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. I surely did. I'm out of breath. Okay, um, in the next video tutorial, guys, we're going to be having a look at question. 2.2 okay and in question 2.2 guys it's just us dealing with cost price and selling price so it's still under finance um so please make sure that you watch this video tutorial if you're going through that topic where you're calculating cost price selling price if you're doing your break-even analysis right things like that even though we're not really doing a break-even analysis here on this question it's just a nice question just to ensure that you guys still remember the formula that we use when you want to determine the cost price if we for example we're given the selling price as well as the profits okay so just make sure that you watch this video tutorial guys you're gonna enjoy it all right 
and that is it guys for today's video tutorial um yeah i enjoyed it i hope you guys also enjoyed it um that's the solutions for our question 2.1.5 and that is it guys i'll see you guys on my next video tutorial please make sure that you have your notification bells turned on uh please make sure that you give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up and also please consider being part of the Matt gang become a member guys join the channel and let's support the channel let's take it to new heights um and that's it guys i'll see you on my next upload that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload at distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy guys. <laughs>